Hey, how's it going? Just want to do a quick little video on Multis. So we've had a couple questions lately from our customers around how to use Multis for providing extra IP networking to the pods. And one of the common things using Multis is using what's called Mac VLAN. It might get a little complicated. There's a link. I have got a gist that's going to be in this. That's going to point to some of these articles. But effectively, what we're doing is we're going to tie a pod specifically to an additional network. Now, it's actually really easy to install. Um, if you're using RKE2, which you should be, really, it's just a matter of adding CNI Multis and then your secondary, which is Canal, is the default. You can use Flannel, Calico, any other CNI. Multis has to be first. That's just the one little caveat um, in your config.yaml. Other than that, it'll just work. So let's talk about this gist. Uh, I'm going to post this in the link to the video, and it's got all the instructions. So really, it just says update RKE2 config, validate. What I'm going to do is I've actually down here, I added a comment, and this is my little script. And it's got kernel tuning, it's got some make directories. I've already done most of this, but the last section right here, it's going to write the file, and I'll, I'll go ahead and do it in my terminal. So I have two... VMs, Multis, Multi1, Mult1, and Mult2. See, nothing's running. I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and write this file. And all I did was, let me VI it, Vim Etsy. As I just added the Multis and Canal to it. And I've got the CIS profile turned off, SE Linux true. And this is part of the STIG uh, configuration just because I'm, you know, why not do it all the time? Okay, and all I have to do now is turn it on. So let's go ahead and do that. And actually, I'm not going to worry about Mult 2. I'm just going to do it on Mult 1 just because it's easier. Okay, so it's installing RKE 2 right now. <clears throat> and this will take a second. While that's loading up, I did want to kind of point out that Multis can handle a lot of different... And again, this article... Let me show you where the article is. The article is listed right here under more fun. And that's what that's what we're going to follow. Um, but it can handle a lot of different things besides Mac VLAN. It can handle bridge. It can handle IP VLAN, uh, host device. So you've got a lot of options in terms of how you're providing that networking out to uh, from the pod out. Now, part of the reason why our customers like it is because you can use multicast. In other words, if you're doing streaming of data, Apache NiFi, things like that, being able to put a pod effectively on the host network means that you can take advantage of multicast where the switch uh, rebroadcasts at a much more efficient speed, a lot of UDP packets, if you're even doing like video streaming and things like that. Uh, cool. We'll wait for that to come up while that's coming up. Let me talk about the config itself. So in this doc, right, we can validate the install that the pods have come up. It literally creates a daemon set. Okay, so now that's up. Let me go down here real quick and add in my last little like kubectl command. kubectl get pod-a. There's not going to be a whole lot. And notice we have a Multis DS. So that's that daemon set I was talking about. And we'll just wait a sec. It's coming up. Okay. And that daemon set's going to go on every node. That's going to provide that hook. One of the other interesting things is that it provides uh, an opt CNI. It actually writes to the host file system and uh, provides some binaries there. And it actually attaches the neck effectively to the pod. Okay, so once Multis is installed, and, and literally you saw that, it was just add Multis to a CNI field in the config. Once that's done, and up and running, yep, everything's up and running. <clears throat> We're going to go, and now we got to create what's called a network attachment definition. So, real easy way to look at it is, kubectl, get uh, net, attach def and we can see that we have none and it's not name namespace scoped so i can do that there you go none found what we need is we need to create one and this basically tells multis um what configuration we want what type it is in this case we're going to use mac vlan what the host nick is to use what mode and how to how to manage ip addresses 
So I've got this as an example, and this example came right from configuration as a custom resource. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do is I'm going to go to the more fun because I think it's kind of a better demonstration. I'm going to create a network attachment that's going to use S0, where it's going to be in bridge mode. So the pod is going to be on the host network, and it is going to be running DHCP. So let me go ahead and create that. Okay, now if we go and do the up arrow, now you can see we have that network attached definition. Okay, and then there's a little trick with DHCP. So in order to rebroadcast the DHCP, you have to run on the host this OptiCNI bin DHCP daemon. So I'm just going to go ahead and run that in the background, and we can do a PS. Okay, DHCP daemon. And what this is going to allow me to do this is going to allow me to then create a pod. And let's go ahead and create a pod. So kube first day with the fingers. Okay, so we've created a pod called DHCP. Don't ever use the default namespace. This is only for this demo. So I've got one running in the DHCP namespace, and then I can go back to my notes, and I can go and get the IP addresses that the pod sees. And what we can see is I have two. I have an F0, so that's the 1042. So that is the uh, canal uh, overlay network, effectively. But then I also have a 48. And that 48 is actually on my host, on my network, my home lab network. Okay. So the pod received an IP from my home network. This is where we can have a little more fun with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take, uh, create another pod with Nginx. And let's go ahead and do that. And then kubectl. Uh, I want to describe it. So we can see the event is I got a 192.168.57. So if I go here, and there's my Nginx. So the pod is actually exposed to my host network. That's kind of cool, right? And you can see that the pod actually has two different network interfaces within it. So again, this is a great way to provide an external functionality from a network standpoint of view to your existing uh, pod infrastructure. Uh, I hope this helps in kind of demystifying some of the multi-stuff. I know it, de it was kind of a mystery to me a while ago, and then having to sit down and play with it. Um, it's really not that big of a deal. Again, the, the two articles are linked in the little gist. It'll be in the, it'll be in the show notes, the video description. Um, and again, the, the, like the Mac VLAN and these pictures really help just kind of solidify, okay, what is, um, what's going on? How do I make this work the way we want it to work? Hope you found this useful. Uh, comment below and let me know what the next video should be. Thanks. Have a good one.